it's a little bit windy. A little bit cold. But guess what? It's winter. Well, anybody with a fear of bears probably wouldn't be happy to see that. Because even though it's winter time, or it's at least late fall, bears aren't always hibernating. And this is a big one, and a hungry one. So, uh, I still carry the bear spray. Let's see how big he is. That's a big bear. Well, it's actually a reasonably sunny day, but I'm in the trees, so I'm not actually going to see direct sunlight on these solar panels until later on in the afternoon. So in reality, I'm only probably going to get maybe two or three hours of direct sunlight. So I've got to make it, I've got to take advantage of whatever I can get. Now, I typically have these two solar panels mounted on the trailer and I have my auxiliary panel which I just put on whenever I need it and it just goes in place with velcro here and hooks. Let me just connect these up. Oh and I also wanted to show you the other vent. Now that is my new stove vent and you can see I've got the flap down, the, uh, the heat resistant material. The flaps down so that I can just put the stove pipe right up there. And I did a test on the road um, it's it's uh, it's secured on there properly had no issues with it falling off or rattling or anything like that So it seems like it's gonna work well Well, it's getting dark and it's getting colder So it's time I set up the wood stove now I haven't really done a lot of improvements since the last time I've used it just two or three But I'll point them out anyway, and one is this uh, cookie sheet or whatever you want baking sheet I guess what I usually do is I take the existing stove in my trailer and I just put this cookie sheet on top and then put the wood stove on top of that. And some people noted, and rightly so, well, that's not really safe because it slides around. So what I did is I put two slots in the cookie sheet and I've got vinyl clips. These are like vinyl cable clips you usually use for wiring. And what I do is I just put one in and then push the second part in like that. And then the same with this one, like that. And now it's not going to move around. So now I can put the wood stove on there and it's not going to slide off the counter. Now there's other changes that I've made. And the next one is the vent. So what I did is I took the plastic vent lid and replaced it with a metal one. I bought the metal lid online and then modified it. Here's a little on how it was done. To convert it, I removed the dome bar with a Dremel as it would interfere with the stovepipe. Then I installed new attachment brackets to match what I had previously designed for my other vents. I next used tin snips to cut an oval hole the size of the stovepipe. On the other side, I attached my tent jack. This is a special heat resistant material and weather barrier I purchased from Seek Outside in Colorado. To insert the pipe, I unlock the Velcro straps, fold down the flap, and secure it to the Velcro below. There is a cutout to insert the pipe through. When not in use, the flap goes back to keep the water out. The tent jack is secured in place with aluminum foil tape. The flap opens from the top so rain doesn't get in while I'm traveling. Um, I also made it with the Slim Potato Head special vent mount so that I can unlock it and use it as a normal vent. But when I'm using it for the stove, it just comes down like that and locks in place. 
There's one other thing I want to try before I completely set up the stove. Now the last time I used it, which was in South Dakota, it was very similar. It was not super cold. Like right now I'm, I'm just above freezing and I know once the sun goes down it'll get a little below freezing, but it's not super cold like some of the times I tried it before. And when I used it at around freezing before, the stove got way too hot. And so I was just wasting energy. There's no point. What I want to try this time is I've got a little river stone and I'm just going to put that in the cage to take up a little bit of space. Now the theory is because there'll be fewer pellets in that area igniting, it's not going to be as hot and hopefully when I put the hopper on, it's not going to, I'm not going to have to fill it as often. That's the theory. Let's see how it works in practice. Getting the spark arrestor on the stovepipe is kind of like a game of ring toss. It takes a little practice, but eventually I get it on. Well, we're almost ready to start a fire, but not quite. There's one other thing I want to try, and that's this fire start. It's by Duraflame, and it's supposed to help start a fire. Duh! Usually what I do is I just put the pellets in the hopper and use a blowtorch to, uh, to actually get the fire started because the pellets don't really start easily. And in the past, I just get the blowtorch, give it a few minutes in the blowtorch, and it would finally ignite it. This time I want to start off with these fire starts. Now, I actually don't know anything about this. I haven't even opened it up to see what it is. Okay. So, I guess, looks like a big chunk of you know what. But, okay, I can break it up. So what I'll do is I'll chop it up into little bits, put it in the hopper first, and then I'll put the pellets in. If it doesn't work, I'll go back with the torch. So I put a little bit of that fighter start in there, about that much worth. I just chopped it up and put it down the hopper. A little bit of paper underneath. Whoa. There's a hunter out there somewhere. Anyway, as I was... My God, he's close. I hope he's not shooting at me. Okay. Let's try that again. So I've loaded the fire starter and the little pieces. I, I just used about that much into the cage. Now I can start with the pellets. Now before I was just grabbing the bag and using a scoop to scoop them, but I've got a little smarter since then. I had these, uh, these water, spring water containers. I don't know what it's for, I guess a gallon or something. And uh, I found out they hold six pounds worth of pellets. So rather than scoop, I just open it up and pour. Hopefully, yeah, it kind of works. I don't have to fill it up completely, just enough to get started. Put that on and I will try this way first. See if it ignites. If it does, bonus. If not, I'll go back to the torch. Let's give it a go. So what I don't want to do is fill the trailer up with smoke. If it takes too much time to go up the stovepipe, it might start coming back and I don't want it to do that. Yeah, it's not igniting anything. I'm going to get the torch. Okay, so the fire did get started, but the problem is because I used that fire starter, it's making tons of soot. 
And that's exactly what I did not want. Yes, it's still going out the chimney, but it's gonna it's gonna fog up the mica and all that all that soot. So yeah, fire starter. I'd, I'd rather stay with what I know, the torch, and just the pellets, than put all that smoke out. That's not what I want. So the fire starter was a bust, but when I did get it up to temp, I got hungry. It was fried noodles night. Nothing fancy, just some zucchini, mushrooms, veggie sausage, green onions, and of course, udon noodles. I'm the man of few spices, and I don't typically add things until I taste them first. Kind of bland. But nobody tunes into my videos for, I'm, for my extraordinary cooking. At least I hope they don't. Soy sauce, lemon juice, And a little ground pepper with lemon. See if that improves it. Works for me. Well, as expected, it got real hot in here. It was over 20 Celsius, uh, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so I've opened the door a little. I've turned the damper down. And uh, I've lowered the intake. Now you can't even hear it. It's there's a little bit of a flame going, but just enough to to give a little bit of warmth. So hopefully, well at least it cooked a meal. And it definitely the trailer's warm plus all the insulation uh, I've added. So not much chance of freezing tonight. Well, I got a nice warm fire. I had a great meal. I've got a nice comfortable place to sleep and I'm in the wilderness. What more could you ask for? Well, there is one thing I was curious about. As you know how some people say that food tastes better in the wilderness? Well, there's one thing I did want to find out. I'm just reaching for my cooler here because I wanted to know if beer tastes better in the wilderness. Now, pretty well most of the time I have a beer, it, it always tastes good. But this time I, I bought some really awful beer. I tried it in the city and it's just terrible. It, it kind of tastes like, I'm not going to show the brand, I'm going to hide it. But it tastes like fermented rope. And I don't mean like rope in your garage. It kind of tastes like the rope that's hanging off a barge, you know, that's been at sea and it's got barnacles and bird droppings all over it. Well, if you had chopped that up, and added yeast, uh, this is what you'd get. It's just terrible. But I wanted to find out if it tasted better in the wilderness, so let's find out. Taste test. Well, it's a little better. I don't taste the bird droppings anyway. Yeah, I'll drink it. For reference, the stone in the pellet cage did seem to work. Instead of one pound of pellets an hour, I only used three quarter of a pound an hour. One gallon jug of pellets burned for eight hours. But I can't forget my disclaimer. Although it seems warm and cozy, let's face it, putting a wood stove in a trailer is a risk. There's always gonna be that chance because you're literally playing with fire that something could go wrong. So I'm not recommending it. Think of this video merely as entertainment and ideas. Uh, I do use a carbon monoxide detector and at 
night. I have an intake hose, so the air is coming from the outside. But it does not mean that something cannot go wrong. As a matter of fact, there's a good chance that something at some point might go wrong. One little note as I take down the stove. Because last night I had something that was a little unusual. It was the first time it ever happened. Um, after I would cooked and uh, the flame was good on the stove, everything was working fine. And then all of a sudden, I heard a wind, and the flame went out, and the entire trailer filled with smoke. And that has never happened. It's like, what on earth is going on? I didn't have time to film it, obviously, because I was in panic mode. Now, under normal conditions, my stove is a closed system to prevent smoke. But unfortunately, I did not attach the inlet hose. So after I got it all sorted out, it happened a second time 20 minutes later. And it was the same warning. A bit of a wind came up, a gust of wind, and all of a sudden the flame went out and everything seemed to be going in the opposite direction. Here's what happened. The wind was coming from the west and it went towards the front of my trailer and it went up because the side of the trailer is angled. When it got to the spark arrester, it went inside this cone and it went deflected right into the flue, right into the stovepipe. Easy solution, and I found it several times after that. It worked. Don't use the spark arrester. There are times when you need a spark arrester, but not in snow, and the roof of my trailer is aluminum. On another note, I kind of wanted to tell my viewers that I've been doing a little soul searching lately. Um, like I'm happy with what I'm doing. I love traveling. I love meeting people. I love to get out in nature and all that. But I don't want to stagnate. I always want to come up with new ideas and, and stuff like that. And part of the fun of being Slim Potato Head is that I've never really defined myself. Like I haven't defined myself like if I was I don't know, RV Bobby or Van Van Halen or whatever, where you've defined yourself by the mode of, of what you travel in or what you live in. Being Slim Potato Head, the, the sky's the limit. I can do whatever I want. And I do want to keep traveling and I do keep wanting to do, um, you know, repair videos, ideas, experiments, do it yourself, and certainly nature. But here's the issue. Look at that trailer. I have used that trailer in the last four years more than most people do in several lifetimes. And I've beat the living crap out of it. It's an old trailer, it's 16 years now, and uh, it's falling apart, it's old. And at some point, and I think I'm at that point right now, I've gotta say, is it time for a new trailer? Because I've fixed it up so many times. I've made improvements. I've made experiments, uh, repairs. Um, but at some point I gotta say, well, you know, that's enough. Move on. And I'm thinking of doing that, um, getting a new trailer. And I haven't decided what I want yet. I've been looking out there. I've got a few ideas. Um, I don't want more, you know, I don't want bigger, I don't want more stuff, you know, to me less is more, I want less, but there's, there's not a lot of choice for people like me, and that's the problem. So what do I do in the meantime? Well, I guess I'm going to go back to what I know, and I, 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 I know nature, I love the wildlife, I, I like being out in the woods like this. But maybe I should do a few videos of me just simply getting on a backpack and hiking. Um, I've done it for decades, winter, spring, summer, fall, doesn't matter. And so I hope, I hope you're okay with me experimenting a little bit. Maybe not uh, having the trailer in every video, just me in a backpack getting up into the mountains or whatever. I might even get on a plane, who knows. I love traveling. I like nature, I like meeting people, 
so who knows where it's going to take me but always looking for feedback so if you have any ideas let me know well i hope you enjoyed this video and you'll check out my other ones as well if curious i listed my other stove videos in the description And I'll leave you with my version of the holiday fireplace. Relax, grab your hot chocolate, and enjoy. <laughs>